Yeah. It's like if you charge a $25 cover at a club, you're going to get a different clientele than if you don't. And it's not necessarily a clientele that has more money. It's just a clientele that really wants to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Dear Shandy, listeners. Hello, Andy. Hello. How are you today? Doing great. Great. Yeah. With multiple R's, maybe? I'm doing great. <laughs> wow, that was a lot of R's. Yeah. Especially great because it's caller day. Yeah. And we are joined by a lovely caller named Megan. Megan, thank you so much for joining Hello, us. Hello, Megan. Thank you all so much for um, for agreeing to be on with me. I'm really excited. So do you mind giving us your age, your city or region, whatever you're comfortable sharing and your story slash question, please? Of course. Yeah. So, um, yep. My name is Megan. I am 30 years old. Um, I am in Atlanta, Georgia. And what I really wanted to know is um, I was trying to figure out where is that line between being pretentious versus having unreasonably high um, expectations and standards when it comes to dating. So a little bit of the, the backstory with that is um, that my my mom passed away back when I was uh, 19 years old. And um, along with that, it was, you know, it was very sudden. It was very tragic. Um, you know, she was really like my best friend and um, her death kind of rocked the whole family quite a bit. Um, and I, you know, I really just kind of went into like this really super dark, deep depression. Um, it was, it was really tough. It was a tough time. Mm. Um, I'm the oldest of four, so I have three younger siblings. So there was a lot of pressure to, you know, kind of make sure that I'm doing the best that I can for them as well. But with that, um, passing of her death came quite a large inheritance that we had received. It went to us rather than to my dad, just because it was from her parents. You know, it was, I won't say the amount, but I mean, it was like well into the six figures. And um, instead of like spending any of it, I invested all of it. I put it all in an investment account, um, you know, wanted to save up as, as much as I possibly could. And, you know, now like 11 years later, it's it's done pretty well. Um, I mean, nice. so. nicely done. Ramit Sethi would have a lot I was to about, about to say, that. Ramit Sethi would be very, very proud of you. He's the <laughs> finance expert we had on. And I'm sorry to hear that, but good for you. For, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I think a lot of people might be tempted to spend it. So good for mm -hmm. you. Okay. Let's continue. Okay. So, um, yeah. So with that, you know, I, I did leave school. I was 19. I was going into my, it was right after my sophomore year of college um, or going into my sophomore year rather. Um, I did leave college for a little bit um, and kind of just, you know, tried to do the best that I could to to just be okay. You know, it was really tough for me emotionally, mentally, all of that. It was probably about three years before I eventually kind of, you know, got a bunch of therapy, got myself out of this and then decided that I needed to do something for myself. Um, so I actually moved um, from Atlanta and I went down to South Florida and I was around 22 years old when I moved down there. And I got into a relationship about a year later after I'd moved down there. Um, so this is where the relationship aspect of um, the situation comes in. So this guy, um, you know, we were about the same age. I was 23 when I met him. He was um, almost the exact same age. He's about two months older than I am. And for the first like year or so, money was never talked about in the relationship at all, really. Um, it was always something that was kind of swept under the rug. We didn't live together for the first like two years of our relationship. So it was kind of easy to just not talk about it. Um, You're you also know, very it, young. I mean, I think yeah. like 23 is. Yeah. I'm going to talk about money in 23 yeah. relationships. I don't know if I did. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Continue. Yeah. I think you start to talk about it when you are thinking about buying a home and you're thinking about kids and marriage. Right. That's or kind or of what I'm in together. Gets, yeah. Exactly. Sure. Yeah, sure. Exactly. So yeah, that brings me to what happens because we eventually talk about money once we move in together. But he didn't know that I had assets. Um, I had no gauge on his financial situation at all, really. Um, and we were, yeah, we were just really young and naive. And, um, you know, around this time, I, I did end up going back to school. I finished college, psychology degree. And um, I, I didn't really pay for school. I got a full scholarship because of my grades and graduated top 1% of my class. Um, so wow. I never really had debts. You know, I didn't really mm. pay for any, I didn't take out student loans. I didn't, you know, um, on all Girl, that. I'm um, like, I'm yeah. proud of you. Fantastic. <laughs> Just met you, but I'm proud of you. Okay, yeah. continue. <laughs> 
but yeah, so, and then while I was in school, I did, I was working, I was bartending and serving at um, a, a big restaurant and bar down in South Florida, um, you know, working like 50, 60 hour weeks. It was all I did. Wow. I either went to school, studied or, or worked. And that was wow. it, you know, and it was tough. The relationship was tough. I, I don't think I was really giving him a lot of attention at all. Um, but you know, he, this is where it started to get a little contentious and I started to get a little resentful once I graduated from school. Um, he didn't graduate college. Totally fine. There's many different avenues. School is not for everyone. I completely understand that. But, you know, he kind of remained stagnant in his job. I was at this point, um, you know, I, I was a special events coordinator as well. So I was, you know, making at least double his salary. Um, and it just got really tough. We we moved in together about two years um, into the relationship. And, of course, that's when money came up. You know, we're now 25 going on 26 and things are getting a little more serious. And um, it was probably around like two years in that like red flags started popping up in the relationship. Um, <clears throat> he uh, got angry at work one day and he punched a steel door, broke his arm. It was like little things like that where the anger issues started popping up, red flags were coming up. He started being really sneaky with his phone. Um, it'd be little things like turning the phone over, um, you know, if it's at a countertop, just turning it over so that I can't see, you know, that kind of thing. But, you know, I, I was still, I was young, I was naive. It was my first like real relationship. We just moved in together. We just signed a lease. So I, you know, kind of ignored it. And then around year four, you know, it was kind of just, we, we didn't really talk about anything. Um, around year four, it was, um, 2019. And I decided that I really wanted to start thinking about buying a home. So, you know, I had saved enough up where I could afford a down payment. And it became pretty evident that I was going to be the sole person mm -hmm. <laughs> um, putting the down payment down. So that was when money finally started to come up. I finally realized how much he was making. He, um, it took months to get it out of him, but he told me how much debt he was in. Um, and it was around $8,000. Um, so I was aware of it at that point. Um, we did end up going through with buying the home and I bought it outright. It was all in my name. Um, and then after we moved in, I, you know, I paid for all the furniture. I paid for the movers, the, uh, any renovations that we did, everything was on me. Um, and I get it. I'm not, I understand I'm totally coming across as a victim here. You know, like I, I take full accountability and full responsibility for the fact that I did it. You know, I didn't have to do it, but I did. So yeah, just get to the end of the story. I, I don't know if I totally agree I know, with that, I but yeah, get to Yeah. But you know, as uh, maybe this is a little more the, the victim mentality that I'm talking about, but once we moved in together, I did know of his $8,000 and he was in debt. So I paid it off. Um, I outright paid his debts. Um, and right after I paid them, he bought, went out and bought a 60 plus K, um, truck. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Hold on a second. Just, just let me get the numbers right. It was 8,000, eight yes. with three zeros debt. You paid that. Then he bought a 60 with three zeros truck. Correct. Obviously he had quite a hefty car payment every month. If, you know, it was obviously he was um, you know, paying it off, but uh, yeah. hold on a second. I got to, I got to <laughs> circle back. On so did he, how did the, you paying the debt off happen? Yeah. How was that conversation? So I think the mentality, so he eventually, like I said, I had to pull it out of him to get the fact first it was $3,000. Then it was 5,000. Then it was six. And then it was finally eight. I finally got the number. He showed me the statements. I was, I knew that that's what it was. Um, after we moved in, I was 28 and I know it's so funny cause I know y'all have talked about this of being 28 and at 28, you feel like you're older than you are at 29 or 30 or whatever, <laughs> but that was truly how I felt. I was like, okay, I'm 28 years old. You know, I cried on my 28th birthday. I thought my life is over. I have to uh -huh. get married. I have to settle down. And so, you know, selfishly, I think I did it because I didn't want to go into a marriage with me being in debt. Mm. Um, and I, another part of me thought, okay, if I pay this off, then he'll have money to buy me an engagement ring. Oh dear. Uh, okay. So, so did, uh, again, just so I understand how did the 
actual conversation that I'm paying I, your debt off, mm-hmm. go I, just real quickly. I just, I just because I, I know her email and I've read it, I kind of want to get her to get to the end of the story because I don't know if it's super relevant. Okay. I don't know if it is. Yeah. Because I mean, here's here's. I'm just the thing. trying to get his personality. Yeah, no, no, all. but it's let let her get. Okay, to the end got of the story. it. All right, all right. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't I didn't read the email. I always yeah, go in yeah. cold, so yeah, yeah. I apologize. It's um and honestly, like I'm probably going into too much context about this situation because it's truly not about him at the end of the day. So we, you know, paid it, and then um, you know, he bought the truck or whatever, and then about five months later, I um had I got I was starting to get really weird feelings, and then. I've never done this before, but I went through his phone. Mm -hmm. Um, I knew his passcode. It was one of those things where I knew something was up. I went through his phone. I found out that he was um, uh, sexting, like emotionally cheating, um, sending, you know, very crude messages to a woman at work um, from his work. And um, then, of course, that night I open up one of his bills and he'd been spending like hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month on OnlyFans. Uh. Um, yeah. So that was like after all that. Florida. <laughs> I don't know if you can play Florida. No, it's not Florida. I shouldn't fault. laugh. It's just it's like I thought the truck was bad. <laughs> yeah, the truck was just the beginning. <laughs> yeah, it's like oh, sorry, my we shouldn't beer. be laughing. Sorry, this is really, it's, it's this cartoonish. Is it's cartoonish. No, I, bad. I can laugh about it now. I appreciate yeah, y'all laughing. Good. At it with me. So, and comedy is tragedy plus time. That's the equation. Mm, so I love it. We're okay. Okay, so yeah. he's tipping on OnlyFans after you've paid off his debts and are completely supporting him in terms of where you live. Correct. Yes. All right. Um, he, I don't want to say completely supporting because he was paying half of my mortgage. Okay. So I will say that. Yeah. All right. I don't want to, but, uh, you know, I, yeah, I did put down payment down and all that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, um, it's anyway. also just the fact that he's like, I mean, even if their money money was not involved. Yeah, yeah. The, the OnlyFans <laughs> changes it and the sexting was, the worker changes yeah, 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 it yeah, yeah, to yeah, a non-financial yeah. discussion. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, go okay. ahead. That obviously was finally the uh, the straw that broke the camel's back. And um, I did break up with him that Good. night. Good for you. Um, yes. So, and, you know, we've now, I've now been single for about two years. So anyway, this gets a little bit more into my question where I gone through, you know, extensive therapy and a lot of work on myself and where I want to be at. I'm super happy in the career that I have. I'm back up in Atlanta now. And the dilemma is that, you know, I finally feel like I'm ready to start dating again. Um, I finally felt ready around like a year and a half of us breaking up. But I feel like now my standards are, I don't want to say impossibly high, but I'm trying to determine if they are impossibly high. You know, I'm really not interested in dating a man that doesn't have some kind of like savings or, um, you know, investment set up or someone that doesn't own a home or doesn't have a career. Like these are things that are very, very important to me now after dealing with that experience. Mm. And I'm having a split decision with it with a lot of my friends. You know, it's about half and half where half of them are like, you know, joking, but they're like, Megan, you sound like a gold digger. You know, you want this. You know, you want this guy that has like all this money and wants to, you know, all these different things. And I look at it as um, regardless of whether this money was um, inherited to me or, you know, I've also worked really hard for my money, regardless of any of that. um, I want someone that is equal and on the same playing field. I don't want to carry someone for the rest Mm -hmm. of my life. Um, You're not a. You do not fit a gold digger here. This like is the, not gold digger. Yeah, I feel like your friends need to look up what gold digger means. Yeah, you're you're in the gold business, and you want to be working with someone who also is familiar with gold. <laughs> <laughs> no, come over here to do that. Don't do it in the kitchen. Come back. This was actually happening. We were about to record this ad, and Andy went to go get a spoonful. Wait, just a spoonful of honey makes the medicine go down. It looks like caramel. Sweet, sweet caramel gold. I love putting that on Greek yogurt in the morning. Look at that. Oh, man. That's like it's almost sexual. <laughs> mm. Okay, put it in your mouth so we can get to talking about Manukora honey. That's so much better than other honey. It's Manuka honey, which comes from the sap of the Manuka tree, which can only be found in New Zealand. First of all, that has an MGO of 850. 
What does MGO mean, Charlene? MGO is a natural antibacterial compound that only comes from the nectar of the Manuka tree. So this is exclusive to this type of honey, and Manukora has the highest numbers around when it comes to MGO. So I've tried Manuka honey in the past before Manukora came along, and it was like 150, one, it was in the low hundreds, maybe 200. That has 850, 850 of what? that natural antibacterial compound. So that's loaded with antibiotics and prebiotics. It is a superfood. And on top of that, it tastes so much better mm -hmm. than any other honey you'll ever have. Yeah. I it, mean, I'm going to say it right now. There's no, no one's going to taste this honey and be like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> It's true. But what I love about Manukora in particular is that they really look after their bees. Mm -hmm. They're not just in it for the profit. They know that it takes time to produce something that's good and they really care for their bees. And if you're still not sold, you one person out there, you're still not sold on Manukora, there is a QR code right here, which gives you 100% traceability to the potency, the purity, and the bee keeper. <laughs> The keeper of the bees <laughs> that made the honey that goes in your mouth. Yeah. Also, I love how Manukora has all forms. So they have it in the little jar, no. but they also have a squeezy bottle. And they also have these handy dandy compostable stick packets, yeah, which love you those. love. Yeah. So these are great for on the go. So head to manucora.com slash shandy or use code shandy and you'll get a free pack of compostable honey sticks with your order of $15 value. Again, that's M-A-N-U-K-O-R-A dot com slash shandy or use code shandy you to get a free pack of compostable honey sticks with your order. You haven't seen or tasted honey like this before. So indulge and try honey with superpowers from Manukora. So I was thinking fondly about Hello Tushy today. Oh, hello yes. the Hello Tushy bidet. That's correct. Yes. And I was just thinking how since toilet paper is now like $600 a pack. <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking of all the money mm -hmm. that Hello Tushy has saved us. Yes, a lot. Plus, let's talk about the environment. You know, you're using less paper that's just getting flushed down the drain. The Hello Tushy Bidet, you can affix to your existing toilet in as little as eight minutes with no special plumbing. And with that on your toilet seat, you end up using 80% less toilet paper. 80%. Plus you get cleaner, let's be honest. It's not like it's the same. It's not like you're using 80% less for something inferior. Oh, you're using 80% less toilet paper and your life is dramatically better. Yes, because you're actually cleaning the area that's pretty disgusting. And also, let's be honest. I mean, this is this is something people don't like to talk about. It, it feels good. <laughs> it feels good to get clean with water. Go figure. We use water to clean every other part of our bodies. Yeah, it's not like you're walking the street and you slip and fall in diarrhea and you're like, does anyone have any toilet paper? Yeah, yeah. A dry paper, just some paper towels, something yeah, dry yeah, is going to Yeah, I need to clean this. myself with paper because I'm covered in <laughs> diarrhea. <laughs> It's so true. And another unspoken thing, I'm getting into some detail here, which people don't like to talk about, is that it does help when the go is not there. Mm -hmm. It does give you that extra little shove. Yeah, I actually think that that's not, it's not a talking point. It should be. But it should be. I actually completely agree with you. Sometimes it just, it helps stimulate the situation. Mm, indeed. <laughs> And who doesn't enjoy a little security when it comes to their purchase? The Hello Tushy Bidet comes with a 60-day guarantee and one-year warranty. And they have over 100,000 five-star reviews. That's a lot of happy buttholes. <laughs> So go to hellotushy.com slash Shandy and enter promo code Shandy to save 10% off plus free shipping on your first bidet order. That's hellotushy.com slash Shandy for 10% off. <laughs> okay, so like your it. question your question is, am I being unrealistic? Yes. Do I have these really unreasonably high standards um, Like, or am I coming across as shallow and pretentious for giving a crap so much about money? No. As I do. The answer is no. <laughs> I know, and especially given the last your, decade yeah. of your life. If you weren't thinking this way, I might question your judgment. This is, it, it actually brings me back to, we did an episode with Dr. Kirk Honda. He was talking about how you on these reality shows, these dating shows, people recognize pre-fame in each other. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, we're both pre-famous. And then we talked about how famous people often end up dating or marrying other famous people or wealthy people end up dating and marrying other wealthy people. It's because they're looking for a certain standard that they have achieved. And also the same perspective. Yeah. Or they want something that the other that the other person can provide that they can't. So for his right. example was like a rich, famous actor 
marries, you know, a, a no, supermodel or something, right. you know, like shocking. Yeah. So my point being is that you've worked your ass off, whether or not you got a start with an inheritance, which by the way, came at a tremendous cost and you did smart things with. No. It's absurd to me that the, the, I just think the word gold digger is it has nothing I'm to do with this conversation. By, I'm offended by your use of gold digger. I'm offended <laughs> by your friend's use of gold digger. Yeah. It's sad about life, but I can always see someone who's been through tremendous hardship, whether it be the way they were brought up mm -hmm. or tremendous loss. You seem very together and adult and you seem like you really grounded. And I and I think that's the kind of thing. I'm not saying you wouldn't be this way if your mother had been fine, but I can just tell that you've been through some adult stuff. You come off very capable mm -hmm. in your adultness. Mm -hmm. And for um, her young age. And for a young age. And and the, um, my point is, is that, as Charlene said, you took this money, you invested it, you made a lot of, you, you actually, you worked for the money that you made on that money. I mean, you are essentially an investment advisor for yourself. And you got a full scholarship to school. You aced school. You were working you while in school. Working 50, 60 even hours Even though a you week. probably didn't need to, by probably the way. Probably didn't need yeah. to, right, what exactly. What you want is someone who works hard and has accomplished things because that is what you also that, bring to the table. That's what I'm saying. It's right. like, this is not about gold. It's not about money. <laughs> it's about a, just the way you approach life mm -hmm. and your status in life. And I don't mean status like class. Mm -hmm. I mean, just your status, how you have approached life and where you are in your life. You are absolutely in the right to look for those things. Now, if you met someone who literally knocked your socks off and checked every single box on earth emotionally and everything, like you were like, this is my dream person, and they happen to not have a huge bank account or their job wasn't amazing, then I think you might want to reconsider. Mm. So I would never, you know, block off this huge subset of the world that might be perfect for you emotionally and physically just because they don't quite have that, you know, career money thing that you're looking for. Yeah. But aside from that, mm. absolutely as a bare boat, like a basis, like a, like a base for what you're looking for. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. Yeah. It's the wants versus needs. Mm. If you need someone who brings to the table, what you bring to the table, maybe not quite at your level, like as it, it honestly, like if we're comparing it to your ex whose debts you had to pay off for him while he was tipping people on OnlyFans, Unbelievable. like there's a lot in between <laughs> and, and I, you're fine. <laughs> no. And, and also, I think I think we have to talk about the fact that there is no chance that this guy wasn't showing these attributes in some other ways that mm. you weren't picking up on or you were ignoring. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I would say that you should find a guy who deserves you mm -hmm. and be very careful about the other things. Okay, you know, you want the bank account, you want them to have a good career, but be very careful about the other things because just because they have that and they seem nice on a first date doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily mean they're, you know, Prince That's Charming. That's a great point. It is interesting that, like you said that, you know, you saw things, but you sort of swept them under the rug. Oh, I sweep. would maybe observe that more, but it sounds like you're, you know, doing this tons of self work. I'm like so impressed with you. I just don't think this is super different from wanting someone who's on your same level, like intellectually. You know, some yeah. people only want to date someone or, or, or socially or someone who, you know, often you'll see a really hot man, really hot woman together. It's like obviously what they value is looking good. <laughs> you sure, know, like it's yeah. like no one's mm. giving them a hard time. Right. You mm. want someone in your league in, an arena that you care about. Now, if you felt that way about 10 things, then I'd be like, oh, maybe you need to rein in a few. But totally. if it doesn't sound like you also are like, and he has to be 6'3", he has to also yeah, do this, he has to come from a good family, he has to blah, 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 blah. But it's also a, a very reasonable base to start from. You're not asking that he's a billionaire or that mm -hmm. he runs, he's the CEO of a major company. You just want him to be like stable and like able to subsist on his own. Yes. That's it, right? For what it's worth, Correct. I... I don't know um, how many episodes you've listened to, but very early on in the podcast, I talked about my wants versus needs, and I distilled it down to four needs. Mm -hmm. One of those needs was stability. Because mm -hmm. I had dated the, you know, struggling actor, and it 
matter to me that not necessarily that he was well to do, but that he had a sense of responsibility and like a stability there so that it didn't fall on me. And I don't think that that's too much to ask for. Stability is a really good need, in my opinion. Yeah. I, yeah, I totally agree. I, um, it was interesting. I, I was listening to one of y'all's podcasts with Rami. Um, and there was something that really stuck out for me that he said, which was when they, when he and his wife were asked, what does money mean to you? And he said, oh, money means like growth and power and, you know, all of these things like socks. And to his wife, what it meant was, um, safety. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I almost, I kind of teared up and got goosebumps when she said that, because that is exactly how I feel is that it's safety and it's security and stability. Like you said, that is what I'm looking for. It's not um, that, you know, I, I want this power and this greed. It, it, yeah. it does come down to the stability and the safety. Yeah. Or it's not about a handbag either. Cause you can buy your own damn handbag. Yeah. Right. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Megan, we're clearly having a big reaction. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like upset at your friends. I'm, I was just about to say, <laughs> uh, the, I'm really disappointed in your friends. They need a talking to. <laughs> you're not asking podcast. you're not asking for something that you're not also bringing to the table yeah. right I, that's what that's to me more gold diggers you paid off your ex-boyfriend's debt <laughs> yeah. you put the whole down payment yeah. on the house you let him buy a sixty thousand dollar truck and pay for only fans like <laughs> you have a right to this opinion yes. okay you're, yeah. you've earned it yeah and, and that's another thing. Speaking of earning it, you've earned a lot. You are a valuable human being and your partner should deserve you. Mm -hmm. And to deserve you, he should have the attributes, the basic attributes yeah. that you need. The same period. drive and work ethic. And by the way, not that this is on topic really, but you earned looking at his phone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the validation. I appreciate that. Sure. Very rare, but you were. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like I mean, a mother being able to go into her five-year-old son's desk drawer and see if he's <laughs> hiding cigarettes or something. Five, five-year-old? God. That's, you want, a, that's can, a horror story. Can I tell you something? When I was five years old, this is 100% true. This is the reason I brought this up. I used to, I was so obsessed. And this is why cigarette advertising is so evil. I was obsessed with Benson and Hedges cigarettes. Every time I saw a Benson and Hedges, that's a cigarette brand. You know, it's like an old timey cigarette okay, brand. I've never heard of it. It still exists. Okay. It's like, it's an old person cigarette. Okay. 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 <laughs> Every time I saw this ad, I was like, I got to have one of those in my mouth. Oh I my was five. God. And I used to go around the city. And when my mom, like, she'd take me shopping or something, she'd go in a store. This was like a long time ago. So I could wander around the city by myself at five. No one cared. <laughs> I would wander around and I'd find cigarette butts on the street. And I'd look for Benson and Hedges. <laughs> and I collected. All the Benson and Hedred cigarette butts I could find. I went home one day. I took all the tobacco out. I took paper. I wrapped it up with tape, took one of the filters and made a cigarette and smoked it in the kitchen when they were sleeping. Oh. <laughs> it is just, has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Nothing to do at so all. funny, though. I what? smoked it. It was just, and, I, and I found it both... Almost sexually exhilarating. Oh wow! And then I and then I got nauseous and I thought it was disgusting. Okay. But at the mo at the first drag, I was like, "I'm this is it. I've done life. I'm over." And were you satisfied? Sad. I was okay. so I was like tingling with excitement. Okay. Wow. Yeah. This was before your germophobia kicked in. Clearly. Oh yeah. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Megan. I assume we're saying what you thought we would say. I cannot imagine you thought we would feel differently. No, I do. I think there is um, a very large part of me that felt that y'all would agree. Um, but I think there is another part of me that really just kind of needed the validation and the recognition that I'm not crazy and that it's okay to feel the way that I feel about this. I'm so judging your friends. I really appreciate it. Yeah. I'm judging <laughs> your friends. I am. The fact that you could think you're crazy. Yeah. For this, and I bet a couple of your friends who are calling you a gold digger are actually gold diggers. <laughs> Projection. Mm -hmm. Takes yeah. one to know one. <laughs> Definitely don't feel apologetic about it. You, you, like you, like Andy said, you've earned, you've earned the right to require this. Absolutely. The hard way. In more ways than one. Yeah. Okay. Well, good luck out there. And thank you for being a Shandy. Yeah. 
You could tell she's a shandy because she yeah, listened to the repeat episode. Shandy. It was a hot topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not a bachelor episode. <laughs> yeah, 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 she's not just a bachelor <laughs> recap listener. And thank you for calling in and for spending your Friday with us. I was so excited. I look up to both of y'all so much. And oh. I pray that one day I can have a relationship at least somewhat like yours. Oh, I that's just, sweet. Every time I hear Charlene laugh at Andy, I just, mm-hmm. it warms me up inside. Oh. I absolutely love it. Oh, that's so nice. That's really sweet. Because some people are like, he's not that funny. Stop laughing. <laughs> no, I love it. It gives me goosebumps every time I, I pray oh. for that. So. Oh, my wow. goodness. Wow. This is a, you, you win. You, this, should she get it? <laughs> yeah, Shandy she, of the Month? Yeah, she, she I'm going to give it to you. Yeah, Shandy of the Month. <laughs> that, that has not been a thing until this very moment, but here we are. It's, it's in my mind, it was a All thing. All right. <laughs> Thank y'all. Good, I appreciate it. Good night. Bye. Good luck. Okay. Uh, I'm judging her friends. I'm judging her friends because they were judging her. Hmm. And wrongly. Wrongly judging. Yes. Who are they to judge her? She's been through the ringer and come out clean on the other end. I through mean, hard work, dedication, perseverance. Yeah. She went through a horrific relationship. Yeah. I mean, maybe there were and good days. And horrific loss, which her- the part of her sense of security came at a very, very hefty Well, that's cost. what I was talking about. Yeah. yeah I wasn't talking about the, the relationship oh, on top oh, of that. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. No, I was talking about that. I mean, yeah. she's been through hell. She's earned the right to want whatever the hell she wants. Mm-hmm. Earned it figuratively and literally. Yes. With the work she's put in and just the experience in life she's had. Yeah, I like that she gave, like, in a way, you could say the backstory was not really relevant to her question, but it was. Like, she could have just skipped to the question. I, I, gotta, I gotta be honest. I still feel like I could have had a better answer <laughs> if I knew how she asked him to pay off his debt. Oh no, did I rob you of it that? It could have shown me how she is in relationships a little bit more. It could have shown me that she has some work oh, to do and how she deals with boyfriends. I told you so. I screwed you over. You did. You screwed me over. Do you want to try and get her back? No. <laughs> She's gone. She's gone. It's over. It's, you imagine if I'm like, will you come back on? We want to. We want to hear how the conversation unfolded. Yeah, it's that would be like the other call. She's like, oh, dear Shani's too needy. <laughs> Diss them. What I'm wondering is how she worded her requirements to her friends for them to make it seem like she's a gold digger. Yeah. Was it? Oh, he needs to be making seven figures a year I, or something at that you know level. You know what I'm guessing? This is what I'm guessing. I'm guessing that one of her friends, or maybe this has happened multiple times, or maybe it wasn't one of her friends, maybe it was somebody else, set her up or said, hey, you should you know, meet my friend, or mm-hmm. here's this, this guy wants to meet you. Like, yeah. call him. And she's like, eh, don't want to do that. Mm. Like, wasn't good enough. Yeah. And maybe that was what sparked this gold digger conversation. Oh. They're like, oh, you won't even like have a date with this guy just because he doesn't have a great job or he doesn't have any money. Yeah. And uh, look, there. Th- this is why our, our, our answers are never cookie bespoke. cutter. No, they're, they're always bespoke. bespoke. There are many, many situations yes. where the caller would have asked the same question. And I would have been like, you're a gold digger. <laughs> Well, I was thinking there are many situations where we would give a totally different answer, but it would be set, like like you said, based on different circumstances. Yeah. But she has, like you said, she has earned the right to have that so high on her yes. list of priorities. And I will throw just one tiny caveat in here is that I do think she was traumatized by this relationship. Yes. To the point. It was her first real relationship. That's, she's 30. Yeah. That's, that's it. That's her main relationship. That's it. And I, and I respect the trauma. Like it, I would also be traumatized. 100%. Like, she should be traumatized. Yes. That was traumatizing. But can you I, also the trust, the trust the, that right. she lost? Sorry. It, it, all the things. Yeah. It was all traumatizing. Yeah. But I do believe that the trauma was so severe there and 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 also it was so unique because it was her only long-term relationship. Mm-hmm. It was all she has to work with is that I think it possibly may have painted her impression of men in a way that possibly is too negative. Mm. Like, like if I don't find a guy who is financially independent and has a good career, it's going to be the same thing again. Only fans, $60,000 truck, me paying off debt. Yeah. So, so not all men are like that. Yeah. So my one minor concern and caveat to this whole thing, and I hope she does listen to this, was yeah. I kind of If she listens to, to a hot her, topic, I think she She's going to listen to her own, her own caller episode. Yeah. Just like, nah, I'm not interested. <laughs> Um, I do think she has to be a little careful in generalizing too much Mm -hmm. because there are really, really good men out there who may be in between jobs, who may have 
you know, money, but not quite enough. I totally agree. Like the idea that, you know, she said she was making twice the salary of this guy. I think that unto itself, big deal. I forget who was talking about this recently, but something about how women now are like taking over the world. You know, there's the idea that the man is the earner, is the provider is different than it was even, I think, 10 years ago, let alone, you know, 50 years ago. So I agree. And I can speak from my dating days. Like I've dated like like my example, I've dated someone who was a struggling actor who who made way less money than me. And I mean, I'm a singer and then I've dated wealthy guys too. the guys that don't necessarily have a lot in their bank account can still have a lot to offer absolutely it's, it's really if more not about more maybe yeah, it's the traits i yeah. think that's the thing she needs to look for is the trait that that sense of responsibility the stability that stuff the reliability and and i totally respect the fact that she would feel safe it's like almost like it's almost like a cover charge at a club yeah. It's like if you charge a $25 cover at a club, you're going to get a different clientele than if you don't. And it's not necessarily a clientele that has more money. It's just a clientele that really wants to be there. <laughs> <laughs> they really want to go to that club. Yeah, yeah. That's where they lose us because we're not willing. We don't. I don't do it. The I could be a billionaire. He says $10, I'm out. The last time I paid cover to go anywhere was the night I met you. Me too. <laughs> and I paid twice the cover you paid because yeah. I'm a man. <laughs> You have a penis, so you have to pay yeah. more. Yeah, I, I, I was unbelievable. Yeah. They can't do that anymore. Can they not? I don't think they can oh, pull I that feel off like they anymore. Do. You think so? Yeah. In some places. It was a fundraiser, Andy. It was a fundraiser. <laughs> <laughs> it was going to a good cause. <laughs> anyway, what's her point? My point is, is that she has a cover charge. Uh-huh. And that's fine. The cover charge is very simple. It's just like you need to be independent. You don't need you 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 should have your own career and you should be hardworking. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's what I read from this. Yes. It wasn't that you need to be rich yeah. or that you need to be powerful businessman. Yeah. So with that being said, that's her cover charge. Yes. To get into the club. Yeah. And I respect that. <laughs> yeah. No band. <laughs> no free drinks just you get to hang out with her yeah, and that's yeah. totally fine i feel very strongly about this one i cannot imagine anyone disagreeing with us on this someone will disagree with us and i and i look forward to how they disagree with us mm, they'll find out they'll, they're like hmm, how can i disagree in a way yeah. <laughs> someone's formulator <laughs> right now they don't even know this is happening yeah. they're already they're like something's happening with your shandy i'm gonna disagree with you <laughs> Well, Andy, we now have a second caller today. Nice. Yes. Exciting, right? Yeah. So Boy. we are now joined by Sarah. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Do you mind giving us your age, your region or city, whatever you're comfortable sharing, and your question, please? Sure. So I am 26, and I'm in the the metropolitan area, the greater New York area, um, and Essentially, my question is about, in in general, the etiquette on dating apps, sort of in between when you've set a date and you're waiting for that date to come and you still have the option to communicate, but there's sort of a natural like drawing back, I think, that happens. And then sometimes the day of the date comes and it's sort of like, who's going to make the first reach out to confirm plans? You know, Hmm. what is that etiquette? You know, is sometimes it starts to feel like way overthinking something, but then other times it seems like maybe it's meaningful, like the decisions to make around that, Um, which there was like a specific story where this came up. I was about to ask. Great. Yes. So um, I was going on a date with somebody where we matched and then talked a bit and set a date that was like a week in advance because of our different conflicting plans. So there was this whole week of not talking. And then we talked like the day before the date and I left it on a looking forward to seeing you tomorrow and heard nothing back until, you know, the whole day went by that we were supposed to meet and it was a little bit like, okay, do I just wait? Do I sort of stay strong and look cool? Like how many neuroses do I show at this point? (laughs) And I was getting advice from a friend, like, don't text. Let's see if he texts. And then in the 11th hour, 
we had like a 7.30 plan and it was like a six o'clock, hey, are we still on kind of text from him? So I was glad I waited. But the whole thing felt like, why, why? is this so hard? Like, what what should be the etiquette around this? Like, mm. how much emotional energy should I be investing in, in sort of having a game plan for these parts of the dating process. So Andy, I feel like all of our Squarespace ads lately have been revolving around DearShandy.com, but I'm just really so excited. Like I've been spending hours on this website. Every time I work on it, I fall in love with Squarespace a little bit more. And this is coming from someone who's had a blog with Squarespace for like eight years. And this is coming from someone who I have heard complain about every online service you've ever used in your life. <laughs> it's true. This is like upstairs. All I hear is, ah. Oh. <laughs> I'll admit I am hard to please when it comes to services. I just think that they should do what they say they're going to do. They should be efficient mm -hmm. and easy to use and have good customer service. This mm -hmm. is important. Okay, so we have to talk about what Squarespace is. Basically the ultimate platform for making a gorgeous website with little to no coding or design experience. You know, at this point, I feel like advertising Squarespace is kind of like advertising a very large soda brand yeah, yeah, that yeah. we will not name. <laughs> it's so true. It's just like, what are we, why do we have to keep telling people yeah. this? But we do because some people still haven't figured it out. Some people are using another service mm -hmm. or just trying to like do it, code it on their own. Yeah. I mean, God, sorry for you. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, and granted, I did have Squarespace experience when I did this, but I made our wedding website in one day. Wow, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Did you really? Got skills. <laughs> skills. But if you don't have skills, nice. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't give that the credit it deserved. <laughs> But if you don't have skills, mm -hmm. the customer service is impeccable. It's on point. And we have to quickly touch on features. You can have scheduling through Squarespace. You can have a blog through Squarespace. You can sell merch. You can sell product on Squarespace. You can have a mailing list. You can have member areas. It's endless, the options they have for you. And it's so easy. You just add a block. You just say, hmm, what, what do I want to put here? And then they have it all listed out for you. And you're like, yeah, this would be a great place for that. It is so intuitive. There are so few things today that feel this intuitive. That's why I love it so much. Damn, you really love Squarespace. <laughs> <I do. laughs> so head to squarespace.com slash Shandy for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code Shandy for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Again, that's squarespace.com slash Shandy for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code Shandy to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So Andy, as the Shandys may not be able to see through the screen, we mm -hmm. have very different skin types. And I really do think skincare should be bespoke because one person's skincare routine may not work for the next person. And that's why apostrophe is so great because it's bespoke. Yes, bespoke. So apostrophe connects you with board certified dermatologists so you can get prescription skincare delivered to your door. This cannot be overstated. As someone who has spent many years going to the dermatologist and getting prescriptions that I had to then go to the pharmacy to pick up, Apostrophe does all that for you. And by the way, I didn't have to get this. I got this because it was easy. I wouldn't have gone through the hoops of going to the dermatologist to get this. Totally. No, I can 100% attest to this. Yeah. And they make it so easy. You fill out their online consultation from the comfort of your sofa. In fact, I did the consultation right here. In the spot I'm sitting, I took selfies of my skin and I typed out my skincare concerns, which were fine lines and wrinkles. Some people might say acne. Some people might say aging. What have you? Everyone yeah. has. Mine this. is ruddiness. Yes. You put that in your consultation. I did. And then a board certified dermatologist reviewed our information and prescribed us prescription topical cream. And mine has 0.018% tretinoin for my needs. Mm -hmm. And mine is 0.05%. I really think it says something about the bespoke nature of this, the fact that we got different strengths. Yeah, and mine is 0 0.018, not 0 0.02. <laughs> It's not one size fits all. Oh, and let's not forget that this is not just about topical solutions. Apostrophe also provides oral medications. Yes. And if acne is your concern, they treat all types of acne. So whether it's hormonal, it's facial, or it's on your chest, your back, your butt. Mm. You know, people get acne in all sorts of places and you don't have to go to the dermatologist and have that you know, I know the dermatologist sees it all, but you know, sometimes you, d you don't want to go through that. Yeah. Sometimes I go to the dermatologist and I, I feel a little judged. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a very special deal for our audience, the Shandies. Right now you can get your first visit with an apostrophe provider for only $5. That's insane. That's the price of a latte. 
Yeah, an affordable latte. Yes. When you go to apostrophe.com slash Shandy and enter promo code Shandy, that is a savings of $15. And this offer is only available to our listeners. To get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash Shandy and click get started. Then use our code Shandy and you'll get your first visit for only $5. And we thank Apostrophe for sponsoring the podcast. To confirm, I'm sorry if you said this, this was a first date, correct? This was a first date. Yep. So you had not yet met in the flesh. Correct. Okay. And there was no acknowledgement of the initial text you sent, just saying looking forward to meeting. None. It was sort of like the end of the night. So I was like, maybe he fell asleep before he could respond. But then he like never yeah. responded to it. So <laughs> yeah. So were, was this on the same platform? You were just text messaging? On yes. both? Okay. So just want yeah. to make sure. Some people don't check other messages. This has been a peeve for me in yeah. my dating days, I've got to say. It's a peeve for me in everything, even above and beyond dating. Oh, Work, t- meeting friends, t- t- all of that totally. stuff drives me up the wall. Yeah. I don't think it's too much to ask. I'm not saying that you should be like engaging in nonstop conversation up until the date. I understand it's like we're going to meet in person. That's when we're really going to get to know each other. But I think... <sighs> 7.30 date, like, I don't know about you, but I'm getting ready mm-hmm. by six o'clock. You're just not being that considerate of yeah. how the other person might be preparing for that. I mean, there are inferences you can make here that maybe he's juggling a lot of different dates in his schedule and he doesn't have time to respond to all the pleasantries mm-hmm. of like, oh, looking forward to seeing you. It's like, I'll just get to it right before it happens. Yeah. Or he's very bad at communicating. <laughs> which is more likely that's and way more likely and unfortunately i feel increasingly common yeah. so that said i think and i've said this before i think i've said it in a q a i don't know how many expect expectations one can have of a complete stranger before you meet like i've always felt that like things like your expectations of like proper etiquette and things begin when you meet in person. And I'm not saying that they can just behave however they want. Like, obviously, you file this stuff away. But I still think you can go on that date and it can make everything that happened before it irrelevant. Mm -hmm. So do you have thoughts on this, Andy? Have you been the man that waits to the 11th hour? I am never that guy. So what's the perfect behavior, in your opinion? It's it's been quite some time since I've been on the apps (laughs) having the dates. But as I recall, a date would be set. And I would, the morning of that day, just say, like, whatever, sort of a looking forward to seeing you, like, just want to confirm we're meeting here. I would make sure that it was done early enough that they would have time to get ready and whatever. Or cancel. Or if, cancel, yeah. yeah or if, exactly. I'm doing it for me, too. I want to know if I have to make other plans. Yeah. Again, this is a very traditional take on this. My policy would be, as a woman in this situation, to let a sleeping dog lie. Let him dictate and make the plan and see how he communicates with me. But that, again, is a traditionalist view. When you went on the date, did you like him? What was it like? (laughs) Oh my gosh, great question. It was was a little disappointing. Like Mm -hmm. over text, he was very engaged and there was like good back and forth. And in person, there was like a shocking lack of reciprocity. Like I was really waiting for him to ask questions back and trying to take beats. And he did not catch a lot of those beats and ask the questions. And though he was like very intelligent and and nice, it just felt like there was it was draining. And I was Mm. like, how are you not noticing this? Mm. Um, Which Yeah, it was an overall positive experience. But going back to this idea of like the etiquette starts more on the date, I think this is where I start to get fuzzy because sometimes it feels like this texting about the date is part of it. Mm -hmm. Because I remember being on a date with someone who checked like the day before, like just want to confirm we're still on for tomorrow. And that was like such a relief. It was like... I'm sure it was think, sexy. It's like, yeah. wow. That's the, that's, the bar, in advance. that's the bar for sexiness yeah. these days. I mean, it, it shows some like taking control, some foresight, foresight. That's going extinct. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The and, reason I ask is, oh, sorry, you were going to say. Oh, no. Yeah. I, I think it just sort of went along with the reciprocity, like perspective taking. Like, mm-hmm. like you said, you get ready for a date. And in Manhattan and the New York area, you might have to travel 45 minutes, you know. So I think it it was sort of a sign, a harbinger of his sort of lack of 
Yeah. yeah. Thinking about my experience. It's, it seems like the date perfectly reflected the communication you had on text. Yes. It was not a surprise. And for what it's worth, there was a spe- specific guy I dated in my single days. And by dated, I mean I went on one date. <laughs> and it was a, a similar kind of thing. Uh, the difference was we had met at like a social gathering where we had mutual friends. He took the reins, was like, I want to take you out, blah, blah, blah. Got my number and then it was like, oh, yeah, that date in the future. And then it was a similar thing where like six o'clock rolls around. We were supposed to meet at seven thirty, eight, And I'm like, finally, he picks up he picks a place that's around the block from his apartment. <laughs> and it's like I said, it's late. And. When I go and meet him, it was just terrible. Just little things. Little, like he chose a dinner spot. Yet when I got there, he was like, oh, I've already eaten, but you can order whatever you want. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, it was a terrible date, honestly. And I agree with you that I think the, you know, whatever happened before in a way reflected that. But I generally want to keep an open mind just because I think people sometimes are a little too quick to write off people, some of whom they've never even met. Mm -hmm. You know, I I think that it's too much to ask someone to really give you their all when you haven't even met in the flesh. But in general, I do agree that it will represent something. If you have an amazing rapport, it's like you've known each other for 10 years. That's different. But if it's south of that, I would say just wait for the day. And if the person does not text you early in that day, you should log that away as a demerit. That's just not cool. That's poor etiquette. It shows poor communication skills. It shows a lack of concern for outside themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, some self-absorption, some lack of responsibility. There's a lot of there's a <laughs> lot of things that you can extrapolate from that behavior that are negative. So just log that away. And then eventually at like three o'clock, you can say, hey, are we still on? Which is totally reasonable. You're not like, you know, you're not asking him to marry you by sending that text. Sarah, what were you expecting us to say? Were you expecting us to agree with you or I'm just curious? I think I was expecting that generally our, our worldviews would align. But I think there was a part of me that was wondering if there would be more of a message that's like, this stuff doesn't really matter or like this is just the kind of constructed kind of way that dating apps have made things so not organic that don't put so much stock in having rules and Mm. etiquette. You know, there's a subtext here, which is like a gender role thing that we're talking about that we think the man should pursue and lay down the plan and check in with you and all that. And the main reason we feel that way, I mean, you really think it's just nature Andy, I do. I, it's not. I would rather have it the other way. I'd rather have someone make all the plans for me. I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> okay. I think it's one of the few ways in today's dating climate that you can be pursued. Mm-hmm. You know, in on when you meet on Bumble and the woman makes the first move or sends the first message, that kind of thing. Or, you know, the risk is taken out of the equation for men. You both swipe right on each other. So, you know, you're both single and interested you know, it's just such a small little thing. Yeah. It's a self, uh, self-interestedness. self Yeah. It it's makes a- you wonder if, they th- if they're wondering if something better is going to come along, you know? Yeah, you always put like, yourself in, in, the ex- in the extreme. Like, what if there was something really wrong? Yeah. Would they be there for you that, with that kind of behavior? When you said that applies to non-romantic situations, I totally agree. Yeah. Like, we all have those friends that won't commit until the 11th hour. That's annoying. It is it's annoying. annoying and it's selfish. It's selfish. I am happy to hear, though, that like you're in your advice, Andy, of like at at a certain point you can reach out because I've seen people who sort of like don't hear anything but go and like they don't. (laughs) No, that's a bad idea. And that has not worked out well or sometimes maybe it has like the person still comes, but it's like a real commitment to like I'm not even I'm not going to do the checking. I think it's it's nice to hear that it's like. No, you can, you don't, you don't have to torture yourself and get ready and then get disappointed. Oh, I totally oh, no, agree no, no, no. with that. That's, that's to, crazy. You, as I, that's why I said you have to check in if you haven't heard anything, but you have to deduct points at that mm-hmm. point. Yeah. Unacceptable behavior. Yeah, I agree. By, for anyone. If it was my old friend from college, I would say the same thing. It doesn't make a difference. <laughs> <laughs> like, are we meeting or what? 
<laughs> like I could have done something with someone much more cool than you. Yeah, yeah. All right, Sarah. Well, th- good luck out there, and I hope this this ha- helped. You know, food for absolutely. Thought. Yeah, no. This is always your advice is always helpful to kind of bring it back to reality because it can get hard in in one's head and on the apps to know like what are we all doing here? <laughs> yeah, what is happening? All right, Sarah. Well, good luck out there. And thank you so much for calling in and for so clearly being a Shandy. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Have a good Friday night. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Okay. I bet you there's going to be people who disagree with us, but I really think it's one of the small ways in which in those early stages, you can still be a little more passive and allow yourself to be pursued. As the, you know, I'm, of course, we're talking heterosexual relationships, a woman's perspective, you know, there's all these caveats to that's that. That's what we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's what we were talking yeah. about, yeah. But it's important to stress that you can get a lot of work done without doing any work by just seeing what happens. Totally. Like just the investigative process of just observing. Mm-hmm. How do they respond? How do they communicate? When do they communicate? Yeah. There's, you can get half the work done of investigating this guy before you even go on the date. <laughs> it's Just true. from something so simple. No, you're letting them show you who they are. Yeah. And what's that saying? When someone shows you or tells you who they are, shows you who they are, believe them. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I I feel 90% in this boat. I really do. I, I don't want to make it seem like I, I think that it doesn't matter. I just think that when... I've always said that that first date is when you lay the bait. Yeah. I, and, and when you meet in person. And again, once you've developed some rapport on that first date mm-hmm. and things are moving into like, you know, relationship y potential dating, or casual, dating, even whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Then the rules are off the table. I I I I will abandon my traditionalist views. At that point, just fill it out and do what you want. If you want to pay for every meal, yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, I yeah. don't care. But this is the time before that first date, unless something radical happens to us in the next thousand years, Mm -hmm. I don't see this change. It will only do harm, not unlike fiddling with an experiment because you want to get the right answer. So like, let's say you have a lab experiment and you're like, oh, it doesn't seem to be going in the right direction. Let me just fix this thing here. Then you screw up the experiment. (laughs) I was hoping an analogy would squeeze its way into this. this this (laughs) I barely made it, the finish line. That's the way I see sending that check-in text. Like, hey, looking forward to the date. Mm -hmm. Then the guy's just like, oh, wow, she's really into me. I'm not kidding. That's what they think. Oh, that's so disappointing. That's what they think. That's not necessarily what it means. It just means like, are we doing this or am I instead doing something else? Like it's information. It's, it does agree. It in no way represents how much I want to jump the bones. I am speaking of Ugh. this as it is the jungle. This is the jungle. This is not <laughs> like a nice little cartoon date. Uh-huh. This, is, this is the middle of the Amazonian jungle. There are snakes. There are giant like army ants. Oh, there are, there are oh, spiders that, fungus, that are this big. There's that fungus that gets to the ants and like yeah, makes and does, them. Does the, the Last of Us show yeah, yeah. thing? <laughs> is that what it's called last of us yeah it, oh yeah 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 Yeah, you know that's what they stole it from they stole it from the, the from fungus nature. the fungus is now in the process of suing them for that <laughs> <laughs> but my oh. point is is this is this is it is the jungle before you get on that date everything you give between the setting up the date and the actual date yeah. is going to be taken in a way that doesn't help you 90% of the time, yeah. it's going to be taken in a way like, oh, I don't have to, I, I feel like, yeah, she's. I don't have to worry about this one. Mm. She's not going to make me chase. Mm. I'm trying to think as you're talking, not that it's not fascinating, but what, before our first date, I'm trying to think back. So we met that night. It, ours doesn't count, but we had that no. rapport. Oh, uh, yes, we had met in person. No. no, but I do think I texted first the next morning just to say... Because the night before we had been like, oh, brunch tomorrow. And I texted you to say that I was awake. Yeah. And then you made a plan. You're like, these are your two options. We can either do some, this or we can go on an adventure like this restaurant, that restaurant. This has a park. Like you had these two plans. And then I got to select one. And then you made the reservation. You chose yep. the place and all the things. And then we didn't communicate again until I texted you to say that I was running late. <laughs> uh, yeah, quite, quite late, as I recall. <laughs> it's okay, though. It's okay. But... Recall that we had established an immense rapport. Yeah. So according to my theory, what you did was 100% fine. Yeah. Because I was like, of course she's texting me when she wakes up because we have a thing. Yeah. This is a thing. We don't have to play games. Mm. I mean, I agree. 
I, but I also agree that at, there comes a point where you just need the information. And if it's going to cost you in the long run, then this was so never meant to be. That's right. Yeah. Okay. We're done. This one's done. Done. <laughs> Finished. Finished. If you enjoyed what you heard today, you know what we will ask of you, and that is to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Leave us Apple and Spotify. Podcast ratings and reviews. Tell your friends. Yeah. And generally do all the things you would do to support a podcast you enjoy. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on Dear Shandy. Bye-bye. <laughs>